one script I love as a new agent is look, you know, here, you get to write the first chapter in my story. And that's how you know I won't let you down because I can't fail. Because if I fail with you, I might as well quit the business. You're my first client. I've got it. You're going to be the first chapter in my story. Let's make it a good one. That is going to benefit you right across all your contacts. It's not just the attorney. So as a new licensee or a pre-licensee or a new agent or any agent, right? Any agent who's been around for a long time and isn't doing their job and hasn't called their database, um, you'd ever want to call and start a relationship or reinvigorate a relationship or whatever it's going to be and, uh, yeah. and just immediately start by asking for something. You know, you don't want to call somebody you haven't talked to in five or 10 years and be like, hey, will you loan me $5,000, right? Hold on one second. Sorry, it drives me absolutely crazy when people are talking while I'm trying to coach. Um, so you never call anybody and just hit them up for money, right? You wouldn't just be like, oh, you know, we haven't talked in 10 years. Where's my five grand? And that's the same thing with asking for business. So if you're going to go meet this attorney or you're going to reach out to your database, or you're going to talk to anybody that you don't have a really solid relationship with. The first thing you need to do is you need to start by asking, how are they, right? You want to ask the basic questions to develop a relationship with them. So family. So what's going on with your family? Tell me about your family. Do you have kids? How many kids do you have? Do you have dogs? What are your dog's names? Cats, whatever, right? Um, I'm talking to this girl, Kelly. I'm, I'm working on deepening a relationship with her. Um, if she ever watches this, I don't mean this personally, Kelly. Um, I don't like cats. I don't, right? Um, Kelly has a cat. Her cat's name is Gibson. I like Gibson. You know why? Because I like Kelly. And if I want to develop a relationship with Kelly, I need to like Gibson. Because if I don't, I'm not going to win her over, right? So, you know, I would go on listing appointments and sit down in a, you know, $700 suit on a dirty couch that hadn't been cleaned in 20 years and have this mangy cat jump up on the couch next to me and start you know, nuzzling up against me or whatever. Do you think I kicked the cat across the room? Of course I did. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, right? I didn't kick the cat across the room. I pretended to like cats. I hand, you know, I pet the cat and they, you know, oh, you know, no, no, no. What's, oh, little Miss Muffin. This is the cutest cat ever. Oh my gosh. How long have you guys had this smelly thing? Um, you, you have to care, right? People, people, the only thing people care about more than themselves are their kids and their pets. And so if you don't start with family and figuring out what's important to people, you're not going to win them over. Second thing is occupation, right? So tell me about your business. So one of the best questions you can ask anyone is what is your goal? So Kirsten, I'll pick on you. What's your goal? Yeah. There you go. Yes. Um, my goal would be to move from California to Virginia this year. Cool. And um, how many houses would you like to sell in addition to moving from California to Virginia? Um, before I move? Any, I any move? and all of the above. It's your goal. Um, in California, I think it'd be really nice to sell five. Cool. In California. So now we've already kind of done this, right? Like I've already kind of asked you your goal and, and we're just kind of getting started working together and everything else. But like yes. we, we went over all this, right? I know like, you know, why you're moving to Virginia. Like I could tell everybody on this call the whole story, right? Because I asked you. Mm -hmm. Now, aside from me, how many people have asked you about your goals in the last six months? Um, maybe three. Yeah, not a lot, right? Not a lot, yeah. So, so this isn't a question that comes up a lot. And so for most of the people, whether this is an attorney that you're talking to tomorrow or a friend you haven't talked to in five years or whoever it is, right? Most people aren't getting asked about their goals, right? So ask them what their goals are. Dig in, be curious, actually care, right? Oh, you have, an, you have a law practice. Awesome. Tell me about how that works. How do you, you know, what's your goal this year? What would make, what would make 2021 amazing for you? Are you looking for new clients? 
what's your ideal customer? Everybody sells something, right? We learn um, in real estate that we're, everyone has two jobs. You have your chosen profession and you have lead generation. And everybody has to lead generate for any type of business, right? They got to get the guy in the chicken suit out there spinning the sign to get people to come buy the chicken sandwiches, right? Whatever it is, there's always a lead generation portion and everybody has to get comfortable with that. So one of the best things you can help with any business professional is help them generate leads. That generally tends to be one of the harder parts of the business, right? I make a great chicken sandwich, but I don't know how to get more customers in the drive-thru. So those would be the types of things that I would start with, right? And then I would move on to what are you doing for fun? So one of the best questions that you can ask people right now, especially another question that I've asked Kirsten is what are you looking forward to, right? Ask everyone you meet, what are you looking forward to? Because if you just ask somebody like, hey, what's going on? How are you, right? What's, what's the answer everyone's gonna give you if, if you ask them, how are you? Good. I'm good, yeah, I'm great. Things are good, right? It's not deep, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not open-ended. If I ask you, what are you looking forward to? The most common answer I get is like, when? Like, like this year, like ever, like, because it's not a question people get, right? So it makes them actually think. And then they actually settle in and they're like, and then the best thing happens is some people, right? This is where you get real with people. Like, I'm not looking forward to anything, right? So when you call your database, when you call your friends that you haven't talked to in a long time, when you talk to attorneys, like whoever you're talking to, right? You're gonna come across people that have been very isolated due to, due to COVID, right? Maybe some people on this call. There might be people on this call that haven't seen people in a year. Might be people on this call that take it really seriously or live with somebody who has health, you know, a health situation or whatever it is, right? Or you just may be cold calling a neighborhood and talk to some old lady who hasn't seen anyone in a year, right? So when you when you ask people what they're looking forward to, you get a glimpse into kind of how they're living and it deepens that relationship and it causes them hopefully to think of something happy. And then you can find out, oh, hey, I'm going to Cabo next month to celebrate my anniversary. And then that gives you another depth of understanding of them, right? Like, okay, tell me about, you know, when did you get married? Where did you get married? Maybe it gives you an opportunity to send a gift, right? A little anniversary gift. The last time I called somebody because they told me they were on vacation in Mexico and I called the hotel to send a gift for their anniversary, the hotel delivered a bucket of beers and chips for free. They didn't even charge me, but they put a card on it and they put my name on it. So I got a free chip, like, and then they, then they took a picture and they put it on social media and they said, thank you so much, whatever. And I didn't do anything. I just called the hotel. They told me they were staying at and asked if I could have something sent to their room and they didn't decide to charge me. Right. So it's pretty cool. Um, so that's like recreation, right? What do you do for fun? What movies are you watching on Netflix? Like so on and so forth. Right. There's all kinds of fun recreational type questions you can ask people. And then the last one is dreams. Right. So like everybody dreams. What do you want to do long term? What's your big picture? Why are you doing all this? Um, a great focusing question is um, if you had $2 million in the bank, what would you do tomorrow? Ask that question to yourselves, right? If you had $2 million in the bank right now, what would you do tomorrow? That will help you understand your priorities. That will help you understand really what you want to spend your time doing. And then if there's a way to recraft your business, right? Your five-year plan, because you've got to work and you got to meet people and you got to talk to them, you got to be successful. But if there's a way to take all those activities and refilter them through the type of activity that you would do if you didn't need the money, then that would be pretty incredible, right? So sometimes people are like, oh, well, if I didn't need the money, I would, I would teach. I would do seminars. I would, you know, I would travel, right? Whatever. Is there a way to tie something like that in to the business that you want to build? Because the closer you can get your daily activities to the things that you really want to do, right? The more fulfilling your day-to-day -day activities are going to be rather than, right? So we've all seen this person, maybe not all of us, but some of us seen this person that's like, I'm going to come into real estate and I, I'm going to be successful. And then they're, they, they just get forced. They're like, here's a desk, here's a phone, here's a phone book, just cold call. This person has no desire to cold call. They, that, that is not how they want to build their business. That's not their personality style, et cetera. And somebody tells them like, here's a desk, here's a phone, you need to call. 
well, what happens? Like anybody can cold call for two weeks. Like that won't kill you. You're indoors, there's air conditioning, right? Like it's not so bad, but it will kill you if you try and do something that you're passionately like not all about, right? For that period of time. So um, try and get alignment in that. So family, occupation, recreation, dreams, that's Ford. That's a really good line of questioning to ask people. Um, but additionally, right? You just wanna dig in and take notes and build that relationship. If you haven't spoken to somebody in the last 30 days, you don't have the right to ask them for business. Let me, let me clarify, right? So you talked to a friend three months ago, right? And then you don't talk to him for three months and you call him and you're like, hey, do you have two minutes? I just wanted to ask you if you could help me with a problem, da, da, da. By the way, um, do you know anybody who's looking to sell? We got these buyers. I know you live in Mission Viejo. I got buyers who want a single story in Mission Viejo up to 800,000. Do you know anything? Whatever, right? And they're like, uh, yeah, hey, man, um, now's not really a good time. My mom passed away last week. Is that a call that anybody's prepared to make? Right? That's, that's not the ask that you want to go for when you're trying to get the results that you're trying to get. So you have to make sure that you have talked to these people, that you know what's going on in their life first before you decide to try and win them over and get business and referrals, right? So um, that's what I would start with is don't even make it about you. If you're a pre licensee, if you're not confident, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, like this is a great opportunity for you to build that relationship really deep, go deep on their side. So what we will frequently do is we'll meet with people that we want something from. So let's say a vendor, I need a lender, a title rep, um, a home warranty person, whoever it is, right? We meet with a lot of vendors. Now, every vendor expects the real estate agent or somebody who runs a real estate office or whatever to come at them and be like, hey, I want you to pay for this meeting. I want you to pay for lunch. I want you to pay for this. I want you to pay for, they're getting hit up all the time for sponsorships, right? So what we will frequently do, right? That's just like you calling your database and asking for leads. Us asking for sponsor money is the same thing as you asking for leads. So we'll call them up and we'll say, hey, you want to go to lunch? And they'll be like, yeah, sure. We'll go to lunch, right? So they think already like I'm paying, like, right? They want something from me, whatever. And then we sit down and we spend the entire hour just asking them about their business. Tell me about your business, your goals, your da, 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 da. Because what we know is by the end of it, they're usually like, dude, this is not what I was expecting. And they'll just come straight out and say it. Like most of the time they just come straight out and they're like, this isn't what I was expecting. I thought you were going to hit me up for money and business. And we're like, look, we don't, have the, we don't have the right to ask you for that yet because we haven't built a relationship. So we're going to give you what you want first. And then when we give you what we told you we were going to give you, then we're going to ask for the business. And you can pre-frame that with all your relationships. You can do that with current clients. You can do that with past clients. You can do that with this attorney. You can literally do this with anyone. But basically what you do is you say, look, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, part of our commitment, what makes us so great is we don't get paid unless you're 1,000% satisfied. So I don't take any money up front and I'm going to do everything I can, every step of the process to make sure that this is a 10 out of 10 experience for you. How does that sound? And then every single buyer and seller are going to be like, that sounds amazing. Big, like, awesome. So at any time, if I'm not delivering a 10 out of 10 experience, would you do me a favor and just let me know? Because I really, I want the feedback. So if, if things are going off the rails, will you tell me? Awesome. Okay, cool. And then my only thing I'm going to ask back, because, you know, obviously I want something too. Um, if I give you a 10 out of 10 experience, would you do me a favor? See, I don't want to go stand on the street corner with a sign asking if anybody needs a realtor. So when we're done here or sometime before the end of our transaction, would you please introduce me to somebody that you know, who's looking to buy or sell a house? Because I would love it if my next client, if my next 10 out of 10 experience came from one of your friends or family. And chances are you're going to be talking to a lot of people, telling them you're buying a house and moving and everything else. And there's like a 99% chance you're going to bump into somebody that needs a real estate agent. And so I'll know at the end of the transaction, if I didn't get a referral, I'm just going to kind of know that I didn't give you a 10 out of 10 experience. Is that fair? And then they're going to be like, and there, there's a whole script to this. And this is my own spin on it. It's called The Promise but it's a framing script. And you can tell people all the time, like, hey, when I, when I, this is how it's gonna go. You're gonna hire me and I'm gonna kick ass for you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it amazing. And you're gonna buy your dream home. And yeah, it's kind of gonna be a pain in the ass and packing your boxes is never fun. And there's all this stuff that I can't control that's gonna suck. 
but I'm going to make it as amazing as possible. And when I do, I would love it if you would give me a review. So when I ask you for a review in a couple of weeks, it would mean the world to me if you'd take the time to go on Yelp and fill out the Yelp review and all that stuff, right? However you want to receive your reviews. So um, those are some of the scripts and I'm recording this so you guys have this, but like those are some of the, um, the scripts that you can use just to pre-frame the expectation that when you give them what you said you were gonna give them, there will be an ask. We do want this to be a reciprocal relationship. This isn't just John does charity work forever. And, and what, I, no, it's, I give you an amazing experience and I invite you to parties and make everything a level 10 and, you know, make sure you don't buy the wrong house with the leaky roof and all that stuff. And then hopefully I get the opportunity to be your realtor for life. And you refer me lots of friends and family, right? Um, okay. Anybody have any what questions? If she about asked this? me about, what if she asked me about me and my business? Well, she's not even going to know you're a real estate agent, right? Cause you're not. Well, she thinks I am. Well, then you need to tell her that you're not. So I would just say I am actually not quite licensed yet. I've already started my trainings and um, I'm just working to build my business, much like I'm sure you started building your business before you passed the bar. And so I'm looking to build contacts and I'm not asking for anything from you. I mean, obviously I can't even take a referral right now. So my goal is by the time I'm ready to earn your referrals, I've proven myself to you and helped you achieve your goals. So let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you. I'm here to figure out how I can help you achieve your goal because I know if I help you achieve your goal, you'll help me achieve mine. Someday, maybe not this year. Maybe, maybe you have a best friend who's a realtor. That's great. I want to be your spare tire. You have a spare tire in your car? Yeah. Okay, cool. So make me the spare tire. Shit, keep me in your phone that way. And if you ever find that the real estate agent you currently use isn't doing their job or doesn't want to service one of the leads you have, call me. Is it a lead in Riverside? I'll take it. A listing in Tijuana? My car is fully gassed up. I'm ready to get down there. Let's do it, right? Because I'll drive to Baja for a listing today. There aren't any, right? There's 2,000 listings in Orange County. That's, that's way too few. Um, all right. Any other questions regarding kind of how you you lead with contribution and really um, go deep with the relationship side before you start asking for stuff? No? Okay. Um, next thing I was gonna talk to you about was, oh, um, okay. So next I'm gonna talk about is a commission discussion that we will do um, with people. So I had another one of our agents ask me to do this. So I thought I would do it with you guys and then I'll send her the recording. So when people ask about commission, what we're seeing right now a lot is what we're calling a commission compression. So back in the day, old school brokers, whatever would say, oh, the standard, right? There's no industry standard. There's no flat, like every commission is negotiable, but they would say the standard is 6%, 3% to each side and da, 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 da. Well, I don't know who got this idea that there was some uniformity to that, but there never has been and there never will be. So the commission is whatever you want it to be. It's whatever you're worth. And what I would say is, you know, rather than worrying about cutting your commission, worry about fixing your, like adding to your value proposition. Like it's a lot easier to add value than it is to subtract dollars and make your business work. So um, one way to think of it is like, where do you shop? Where do your customers shop? So if you are a discount agent and you wanna go to be the cheapest agent, then you're gonna need to work off of a volume model. So you're gonna have to do more units. So if you wanna charge everybody 1%, that's fine, but you better take a lot of listings which is gonna sound like a lot of work, right? And then you're kind of kind of be like the Walmart version, right? We're making it up, like we're very small margins, but we do a lot of business, right? Amazon, same thing. Um, or it could be like Nordstrom, right? When you walk into Nordstrom, it's a much bit different experience, right? You walk in, it's not crowded, there's salespeople to help you, the salespeople get paid on commission, they're more knowledgeable of their product, they have an amazing return policy. Their customer service is top notch. After you check out, they walk around the register and they hand you the bag. They do gift wrap, right? All that shit. So that's me, right? I'm Nordstrom. I'm not Bloomingdale's. I'm not Neiman Marcus. I'm not listing your $30 million beach house. I'm not doing a $10,000 video for your home. 
right? I'm not the most expensive, but I'm not the cheapest either. Um, we do do staging, which is, you know, a, a more of a high level thing. And we do charge a bit of a higher commission for that. But uh, my mentor and your guys' mentor, Dan Beer. So if you're not connected with Dan, Dan and Kyle do a Monday morning mastermind. So if you're not on the Monday morning masterminds with Dan and Kyle, you are missing out. Um, if you're with EXP and with our EXP group, you have access to that. Just ping me and I'll make sure you have the direct link. If you are not with EXP or not licensed or not with us yet, I can get you like a one-time guest pass. Um, but until you're with us, you can't go every week. Um, but basically what they do is they do just like this. So how cool would it be to learn from guys who are selling 300 units a year in San Diego, right? Like I've sold a lot of houses. I've coached a lot of people, but these guys are like next level. And there's usually like 150 people on that call. So you guys should all get on that call. But what Dan taught me about the flexible commission structure is this. So we go in and we say, hey guys, um, thanks, I'm so glad. So uh, we've talked about everything. You're excited to work with me. We're 100% good to go. The only thing you wanna talk about is commission, right? And Kirsten or somebody unmute yourself and, and role play with me on this one. Chris, you wanna do it? See you there. Yeah, sure. There you go. Sure. Hey. Yeah, thanks so much, Chris. Really appreciate it. The house is awesome. You know, obviously the marketing plan I presented to you, you know, I think you see that we can get things done. Um, so we'd really like to move forward. Do you have any other questions for us? Yeah, I mean, what's this going to cost me, John? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. It's not going to cost you anything. We're going to make you a ton of money. We'll just take a small piece of the proceeds. Is that okay? I mean, that's not, that sounds a little... I'm uh, just teasing. I'm, I'm just teasing, man. Yeah, of course. There's a cost to everything, right? So um, wh what we usually do is we do a tiered commission structure. Has anybody talked to you about one of those before? No. So um, the thing that I know is that you probably have this like fear somewhere in the back of your head that the second we put the sign out, right, somebody's going to come up to you and call you and be like, man, I wish you sold me the house, Chris. We could have cut the dirty realtors out of it. and We could have just worked directly with you, right? Is that like back of your head somewhere? Is there like a little bit of a fear about that? Yeah, I mean, you never know, right? You never know, man. So here's the deal. If you get a call anytime between now and forever, and it's like a friend or somebody from church or work or whatever, and they just want to do the deal with you, and you don't want to hire me to do the paperwork, shoulder the liability, hold your hand, wipe your booty, all that stuff. Yeah, no problem. You just tell me, just like if you think I'm not doing my job in a week, right? If you, if you think I'm slacking, call me in two weeks. You tell me I'm fired. It's zero, zero dollars. You don't owe me anything. So we do a minute to minute listing agreement. So you go ahead and say yes today. And by the time I get to my car right now, you tell me, you text me, say, never mind. We're done. It's zero. Does that sound fair? Yeah, it sounds great. Okay, cool. So now what if that guy calls you from church or work and they want to work with you, but you're like, huh, I'm smarter than that. I, I used to be an attorney and I am not going to do my own paperwork. I'm not going to shoulder my own liability. I don't even know what forms are needed or whatever, right? You just want me to do all that for you. And then they'll be unrepresented, right? They'll represent themselves as a buyer. Mm -hmm. um, for that, I'll do it for 2%. Is that fair? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, okay. So 2% there. Um, there is a very small chance, you know, we're pretty proactive. So one out of 10 deals, maybe one out of 20, um, we'll find a buyer ourselves and we'll end up representing the buyer and representing you as the seller. Now, in that case, I'll probably have my partner represent the buyer and I'll represent you. You know, we really try and do it like a Chinese wall, but let's be honest, like we all work for you, man. You're the seller. So we're, we know the market we're in. We're going to, it's going to sell for the highest price. Nobody gets a deal because they worked with us, right? But maybe you get a little bit of a deal because we represent the buyer as well. So if we do buyer and seller, we're going to do it for 4%. So we'll cut, cut a couple commission percentages off. Is that okay? That sounds fair, yeah. Yeah, so that's probably less than what anybody else offered you, right? So we got zero. If it's just you sell it to a buddy, you tell me I'm fired. 2%, if I represent you, the buyer is unrepresented, one of your friends or family, somebody like that. And then 4%, if I represent the buyer and represent you as the seller, right? Yeah, that's fair. Okay, cool. And then most cases, what happens is a buyer comes from the back of another agent's car. And so right now, the average commission in the MLS that a buyer's agent is being paid is 2.5%. I printed them all out here on the sheet. See, these ones up here, they're offering two. And these two down here, they're offering three. But almost everything on this page is offering 2.5%. And then my fee is 3.5%. And that's because we do the staging. We're proactive. We sell properties for, like I showed you, 100000 over asking. Like we, so that's what we charge. So total 2.5%, 3.5%. That puts us at 6%. Is that fair? Yeah. What if I don't want the staging, John? Well, Chris, I've seen your house. You need the staging. I mean, you want to leave money on the table? Is that what this is about? I just want to know what it looks like if I don't want the staging. We can talk about it later, but... 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for, for sure. So really the staging doesn't actually contribute to any additional cost. It's just how we make sure that we achieve the best results for you. So see this house, the one that I talked about uh, over here on Harvest. Yeah, yeah. So when we came into there, they had a messed up kitchen. Um, they didn't want to do the work, right? They didn't want to pay the money. They didn't want to paint. They didn't want to stage. Um, but I didn't want to see them sell for less than market value. And so we kind of twisted their arm, I'm going to be honest, and we, we forced them to remodel their kitchen, it cost them five grand. We coordinated all of it. We actually got the house painted. We coordinated, we, we actually ended up paying for a little bit of the painter because they didn't, you know, they didn't like the, the extra room that we wanted to have painted. So we went ahead okay. and took care of that and, um, and we staged it. And by doing so, we sold it for 11% over asking price. 11%, man. If we didn't do all that, it, I mean, we're talking forty, fifty thousand dollars. So, are you sure you want to leave forty or fifty thousand on the table? I'm just saying it's a tiered structure, so I want to leave. My I'll, I'll do it if you want to throw out the staging. I'll do it for five and a half total. Three to me, two and a half to the other side. All right, we can talk about it. All right, perfect. So, are you ready to move forward right now? Yeah. All right, cool. So let's do it. So that is literally how it would go if I was actually talking to someone. Like I role play, real play is role play. And that is really how I would talk to people. And so when you're role playing with somebody and you should practice this stuff, right? You should watch this recording. So you guys get the point, right? We'll start with just the basics, right? The point is zero, two, four, and six. Six, if I can get my thumb out there, six. Um, so zero, two, four, and six, you can put any number you want to that. That can be zero, one, three, and five. That can be zero four, five, and six, you get to make up that shit on your own, however you want, right? I know people who charge 7% commission, 8% commission. So it's not about it has to be six or this or that. The thing is you want to give them choices. The alternative to that model, which I really like that model because it gives some variables and it, and it makes people feel good. And the reality is in that model, I'll tell you the reality. How many times do you guys think the 0% commission happens? Where they find someone from church or work and they tell you never mind and they just sell it on their own. Really? Out of a thousand, out of a thousand deals, how many times does that happen? Ten. Zero. It never happens. It doesn't happen. The only way it happens is if you're a, a dumb shit and you get fired. So if you get fired, you deserve to get fired and you never want to hold a client hostage anyway. People are like, do you really do a minute to minute listing? Yeah. Do I want to work with a seller who doesn't like me? Absolutely not. Um, Mark, do you have a question? What about the neighbor that brings cash over as soon as they see the listing and says they want to buy this house? Go ahead. <laughs> buy it. Sell it to them. I'm going to educate them on why they don't want to sell to the neighbor for a pile of cash, right? Do you really want to sell to a drug lord? No. I mean, whatever, right? But no, we're not, <laughs> selling, we're not selling to the neighbor. You know why we're not selling to the neighbor? Because the neighbor is not willing to pay top dollar. You want top dollar, right? I can sell it. I, I'll get you an investor offer. I'll, I got it with me. Here, hold on one second. I'll call my buddy. I'll put him on speakerphone. I'll say, hey, look up the property address here. Yeah, how much would you buy it for? He's going to pay 60% of after reno value, right? Because they're trying to steal the properties, honestly. And because he can't take any risk. The investors don't take any risk on that stuff. So anybody who's willing to just throw a number at you is not going to be top dollar. Top dollar is after I get 65 people here over the weekend and I get 10 people fighting over it. And we get two pregnant ladies that are insane and pay 50,000 over the price that they actually should pay. That's what we're trying to achieve, right? So John, don't, get, uh, don't get yourself canceled, John. Don't get yourself canceled. No, it's a good thing. I, that's my ideal customer. My number one ideal demographic is pregnant ladies. That's my, that's my gig um, because they're very emotional and they're very sensitive. And that's where I work my best. Um, zero never happens. 2%. How often does that happen where they find a friend and they want you to represent them? It's one out of a thousand. Okay. And these aren't my numbers. These are Dan Beer's numbers and Dan Beer has sold a thousand homes. So Dan, one out of a thousand will do that. Is that, is that a statistic? Is that even something we can account for? No. So that's zero as well. So that will never happen. So you'll never make zero and you'll never make two. One out of every 10 times, if you're very listing heavy, right? 10%, maybe 5% you'll get the 4% deal. Well, what happens if you don't get the 4% deal? What do you get? You get three, right? Or three and a half. So if you double end it, you just got a bigger commission than if you had done it just one side. So it's all about what you're getting per transaction. So be happy with the 4%.
And then the 6% or the six and a half or the seven or whatever you want to charge, that almost always happens. And so I'll give you one more spin on this because we are in a commission compression world, right? You've got your red fins and Zillow's and Bobby, the discount broker, and all these people are trying to do it for the cheapest, right? And sellers are saying, hey, I just got six letters at my house. I'm not paying 6%. I know the market's hot. You're going to sell it in a weekend, blah, 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 blah. Number one, defend your value. You're worth every penny. It is more work to sell a property in a market like this, as hot as the market is and as many offers as you get, Nicole will tell you it is more work to sell a property with 15 multiple offers, 100,000 over asking, than it is to sell one with two buyers. Because I have to review every single offer. I have to create a spreadsheet that compares the offers. I have to educate you on the pros and cons of all of them. I have to vet every buyer. I have to manage 68 showings over the weekend. Book them all in, do the feedback, get the offers in, follow up with everybody. Like you need to walk your sellers through what the process looks like of selling a home for a hundred thousand over asking. I have to call also have to deal with at least 60 dipshit agents that can't read showing instructions. Yes. I have to deal with all the fuckers who didn't write an offer. I have to call the people who call me after it's already sold and ask me why they didn't get in there and why I sold it too soon. I have to deal with the 10 pissed off buyers that didn't get the house and their real estate agents who are mad that just because they wrote 100,000 under the next guy, they didn't get a fair shot at it or whatever nonsense that is. Then I have to hopefully keep two or three people in backup position in the event the entire thing doesn't come through. And then guess what? My liability has never been higher. When do you think a buyer is most likely to sue somebody? When the market is hot, right? because the buyer is ultimately gonna feel like they might've overpaid if there's a correction. So for every single one of those reasons, I don't believe that I need to discount a penny right now. In fact, I should probably be charging more, right? You guys see why I just made a really good case on why this is harder than a normal market, right? Okay, second thing, if you're gonna do the commission compression reduction thing, start higher. So Chris, if I came in and I was like, yeah, we're going to do it all. It's going to be amazing. I didn't give you zero, two, four, six. I didn't give you anything. I was like, cool, you ready to go? And Chris is like, yeah, I'm ready to go. Cool. It's going to be a 10% commission. What are you going to say, Chris? Can we talk about that? <laughs> Absolutely. Would you like to make it 11? No. no I'm no. just teasing. I would never make it. I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. It's okay. <laughs> um, so what are, you, what are you thinking? 10% is that just that just seems a little higher than what you're used to. You know, 10, 10 seems high. I've been talking to some agents and they're usually in the, in the five to six range. So five to six. Okay. Um, wow. Somebody said they do it for five. Yeah. They brand new. I, I mean, I don't know. Just, they don't, they don't I, do a lot of marketing, I guess. I'm I don't interviewing, know. Anyway, I'm interviewing that, a lot of agents right now, John. Totally understand. Yeah. And you're always going to find people who do it for less. Would you go to that? Uh, the $1, the 99 cent tattoo parlor. I mean, John, it's a hot market. Like I know, man. I'm kidding. All right, so here's what here's what we'll do. What if we just do it for seven? I'll take three percent, thirty percent discount. Let's just do it for seven. For the best, you're gonna get the best though. How how much better are you doing at seven than than the guy at five? Call my clients. I've got here the three references for the last three houses I called or I sold. Call them and see if I'm worth it. All right. Okay. I'll call. So again, if I hadn't just sold the last three properties for freaking insane numbers that are just so far above what I thought was achievable, I probably wouldn't have that level of confidence. So you have to do it. But if you start at seven and they want to negotiate, then they're excited about six. And if you start at six, then they want to get to five. And if you start at five, they want to get to four. And if you start at four, they want to get to three. So don't start low because you're not confident. If you're not confident, if you're ready to go in and lay down on that negotiation and say, I'll list it for 1%, Tony, I don't care. Just sign here. I'm desperate, right? If you're willing to go in and lay down, then you need to start higher because it's the only way you're going to end up getting any money when all's said and done, right? So, so pick a number you're comfortable with, create a value proposition that's unique to you. So let's talk about that for a minute. So my value proposition is, Hey guys, I saw, I set records last 
10 houses I sold, I set the record sale in the community. I sold them for five to 10% over asking. I'm worth every penny. We stage our listings. Nobody else does that. It doesn't cost you an extra dime. It's all part of our fee. Uh, we babysit it. You know, I'm the best call my clients, whatever. I'm amazing. That's my value proposition, right? What are your value propositions? Let's hear from somebody who is on, I mean, I think most people on this call are new, newer, new-ish. I mean, Nicole, you're not new, but whatever. What, what, what's unique? What, what do you guys offer that would compete with me to stand out? Because you guys can't use mine, right? You can't say that you did all that. So what would you say? What makes you you? So I, I don't know what you what you do, John, exactly, but I'm a I'm a 24/7 kind of guy. Like you can call me anytime, and I'm I'm going to be available to you. Yep. So Chris has time, right? So he has the ability to be more responsive. Chris can say, "Look, I I only have a couple of clients." So I'm going to be real with you and tell you that. Now, if you hire John, he's got a bunch of clients. He's, you know, he, he might not pick up your call. He doesn't even work weekends. Like, I don't know about that guy, but I'm going to be at your back and call 24 seven. Can you see how, when you're a newer agent, that time commitment where you can say, look, you've got me, you get me and you got all of me. I won't let you down. Right. That's, that's a big value prop for a newer agent. Um, what else? That's it. Nobody's taking any listings this year. Come on. How can you be unique? I'll, right? be, I'll provide a 10 out of 10 service and walk you through the whole process. Okay. So can I do that? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can, right? Everybody can provide a 10 or say they can provide a 10 out of 10 service. I can document it because I have a bunch of online reviews and I have a bunch of testimonials from clients that will tell you that I did that. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of a tough one. Um, other things that new agents can do, right? So one script I love as a new agent is look, you know, here, you get to write the first chapter in my story. And that's how, you know, I won't let you down because I can't fail. Cause if I fail with you, I might as well quit the business. You're my first client. I've got it. You're going to be the first chapter in my story. Let's make it a good one. Right. Or, Hey, I use this one all the time. So you guys know in real estate, right? There's a, um, there's a, a local expert. There's always going to be the farmer, right? The guy who's like the local, I, I work the sunny Hills neighborhood and I know everything about this neighborhood. I sold the last 50 houses here, blah, 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 blah. Well, the script you always use against a neighborhood expert when you're working with them is you go in and you say, hey, so I see you met with Chris, the Sunny Hills expert. How'd that go? Like, yeah, he went all right. You know, he knows his shit. He's, he's been around for a long time, whatever. I'm like, well, I guess it didn't go that good because otherwise it wouldn't be here, right? Like, well, no, we didn't sign with him. He wanted us to, though. He brought his, his triplicate and he told us to press hard. Third copy's ours, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. I know how Chris works. Here's the deal. So you know those, those three other houses in the neighborhood that Chris has for sale? Yeah, 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 we know them. Yeah, so um, the one's been on like 110 days, I think. One's been on like three weeks and one's been on like two weeks. So when you list your home, if let's just say you list it with Chris, you know what the problem is? No, what's the problem? Well, the problem is when you list with Chris, he's probably going to take the hot buyer leads that are coming into your house and he's going to go show them that house that he's had listed for 110 days. You know why? No, why? Well, because his sellers are probably pretty pissed off by now, aren't they? Right? He promised you he'd have it sold in a weekend. It's been three and a half months. He still hasn't sold those people's house. So he's probably going to take all the hot leads off of your listing and go try and sell that house with them. And then if he happens to sell your house, great, but you're just a number in line. And by my count, your number four. So do you want to be the fourth house in the neighborhood to sell or do you want to be the next house in the neighborhood to sell? So here's what I'm going to do. When I take your listing, I don't list competing product. So what that means is I won't list. So let's say your next door neighbor with a beautiful, you know, four car garage. Let's say those people come over to the first weekend and they're like, John, you've done an amazing job here. I'd love to list my house with you. You know what I'm going to tell them? Thank you so much. I would love to take your listing but not until I'm done because I made a commitment to these sellers. And so when I'm done with this job, I'll be ready to start your opportunity. 
And so by positioning myself that way, right, or by, by committing that to you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you don't have to worry that I'm going to take buyers from your property and sell them to a different listing. We're going to make sure we get you the, the result that I promised you. And then I'm going to use that success story. And I'm going to expect you to help me find my next seller. So I've prepared this letter and I'm going to ask you, I'll, I'll mail it out for you, but I want to get your permission first. And you can see that it says, Hey, this is Tony. I'm the guy who drives the red truck with the German shepherd. And I just wanted to let all the neighbors know that I hired John Pugh to sell my house. And if you have any questions or any, anybody who wants to buy it or anybody wants to look at it, please reach out to John. He's amazing. Would it be okay if I sent this out on your behalf to all your neighbors to let them know you're putting your property on the market? And they say, yes. I say, great. When I do an amazing job and you're a raving fan and we get you this incredible number that you're super satisfied with, would it be okay if I sent out this other letter? And if this other letter said, Hey, you know, that guy I told you about John Pugh, I listed with him, by the way, he did everything he said he was going to do. I got 10 offers sold for a hundred thousand over asking. I am thrilled. If you guys need an agent, you've got to hire this guy. He's amazing. Would it be okay if I sent that letter out as long as I deliver? And then they're going to be like, yeah, sure. I don't, that's fine. I'll get you, I'll, I'll, I'll personally hand deliver. You sell my house for a hundred thousand over asking. I will hand deliver that letter to every single neighbor on the block. Right? Who wouldn't? These letters, these, this type of thing is going to go so far for you, right? If you start to build that into your business now, start to think about it now. Don't wait until you're Dan Beer to start doing Dan Beer shit. Build that in right now. Get your sellers, right, to leverage on your behalf. Make promises that you're not going to take competing listings. Do everything you can to give, like, like you said, personalized 24-7 service. Now, I would argue you don't want to work 24-7 for anyone, Um. And at the same time, right, you have time. You have more time than I do. And that's what you can use against people. So you can say, hey, I know you interviewed JoJo. He's got 50 listings. How much of his time do you think you're going to get? You work with me, I've only got two. And the, the other one I'm about to sell. So you're going to get me, as much of me as you need, right? Um, the other way that people do the commission conversation is they say, okay, they start to play with all the numbers. So they're like, hey, um, yeah, so somebody said they'd do it for cheaper. Um, all right, so why don't we do this? Why don't we offer the buyer's agent 1%? We'll just take all the short out of the buyer's agent side. So who, who here thinks that's the way to go? Anybody? No? I mean, that's good. I'm glad you all answered that way because you guys are probably going to do more buyer side deals than listings this year. But um, right, what? Well, you don't need a high percentage. Do you think if I took a hot listing, oh, Nicole, I'll ask you. So Nicole, if you took your Garden Grove listing and if you had put it out there at a 1% commission, would people still have showed up? Probably, to be honest, they would have, but not in the droves that they did. Yeah, but it sucks. What did you offer right. at that? 2%. It was three and a half total. I took one and a half, gave the buyer's agent two. Never short the buyer's agent. So she overpaid, she took a three and a half percent listing, long story, had to happen that way. And then she gave two and a half percent to the buyer's agent and she kept one and a half percent of the listing agent. That sucks. Like that's, you know, I probably would say that's wrong, but it, for her, it's right, right? So, it, so it's right because that's what she wanted to do. And I, I do stand by that. I agree. Don't, don't screw the buyer's agent over. I generally won't give less than two, but I will take it down to two. So I did. For, I took it down to two. It was three and a half total. Right. But I'm saying like, for instance, I took a 5% listing recently right. and I offered the buyer's agent two and I kept three because that's all I need to offer. If I offer less than two, I agree. It might, it might lessen, but now all the commissions are public anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Like, but you know, you can put it, you can take it from the buyer's agent side. So Chris says, Hey John, I don't want to do six. I want to do five. Okay, great, Chris, let's do five. I'll take three, we give two to the other side, we're good to go, right? That was easy. I just gave away money that wasn't even my money. And guess what? Nobody cares because there's so few listings on the market right now that you don't need to overpay a buyer's agent to get the job done. So that's one option. The other is repeat clients. So let's say, Chris, we've already done business together. You wanna role play with me for one more second? Yep. Hey, Chris. 
yeah, man. So it was so much fun helping you guys buy this house. I'm excited to sell it for you. We're going to get you moved into your new place. Um, it was single level. I know the knee is, you know, bothering you and whatever. So we can't do the stairs anymore. Um, so we're going to go ahead and sell it. Everything looks good. Um, here's how the commission works. I am going to list your home for uh, five and a half percent. Normally I charge six, but I'm giving you a half a percent discount because you're a repeat client. How does that sound? Sounds great, John. Awesome. And guess what? That's not where the fun ends. I'm going to give you another bonus. So not only am I going to reduce my commission on the sale side a little bit, but I'm also, when you purchase that, that single story, I'm going to rebate you a half a percent of that commission, which is probably going to be about 5,000 on that side. So overall, you're going to save about, I don't know, $9,400. Um, so half a point discount on the listing and a half a percent rebate on the purchase. Does that sound fair? Yeah, sounds great, John. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and get started. So now why did he do that? So number one, he's a repeat client. So I'm already going in with an easy deal. I like him. I want to make it work. I know his financial situation, I know his family. I'm happy to do it for the five and a half percent. So I say no problem. And because he's doing two transactions at the same time, I'm going to credit him a little bit back on the other deal. What a lot of people will do it, when faced with having to negotiate commissions is you take all of the discount and you apply it to the second deal. So if Chris says, no, that's not good enough. So Chris, grind me a little, let's, let's say that's not good enough. So it's uh, five and a half. So I'm gonna cut half a point off on the front end. And then I'm gonna give you a half a percent rebate on the back end when you purchase. Is that okay, Chris? John, I've known you for a while. This is like, you're looking at three deals now with me and I've sent you people. I, I kind of feel like I need a better deal. Well, you know what, honestly, if you promise never to tell anybody else, um, you are right. I mean, I appreciate that you've sent me business and you're going to continue to send me business, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, man. So if you're going to continue to send me business, I'll do, why don't we do this? I'll honor the, the half a percent on the front end, right? On the listing. I, I just, you know, I like to have my, my costs and fees taken care of up front, but then on the purchase, I'll go ahead and give you a full percent back. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're putting out cash on the, on the list side, so I get that. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll rebate you. Basically, basically, we'll almost do the buy side 50-50. I mean, I might only make one, you know, 2% commission if, if, they, if they cut me on it. So I'll, whatever it is, I'll give you 1%. Is that fair? Yeah, it's great. I appreciate that. So the reason people stack it to the back end is because it keeps them loyal. So if I sell their house, if I agree to discount my commission, but then I'm going to take a full commission on the purchase, they know that. But then what happens if I sell their house and then they don't use me on the buy? If I offer them a rebate from that deal, then they're more likely to work with me. If I don't offer them anything, then there's a good chance that they might just walk into an open house or go straight to a listing agent or somehow otherwise screw me over. So by pushing that discount or that rebate forward onto the next transaction, you're, you're putting it in a position to retain their loyalty. Does that make sense to everybody? Cool. Um, all right, last thing. I want to make sure you guys know where to go for everything. So um, in Workplace, there is eXp Realty announcements. Every single week, they announce the top classes for the week. And they generally pick one or two per day and kind of put that across. So every week you guys should be going on to Workplace and seeing what are the hot classes this week that we should take. On Fridays, there is an all EXP leadership meeting. It's from 8 a.m. Pacific to 8.30 Pacific. You should be on that meeting, right? That is, that is like, what's going on with the company. If you wanna know everything about the company, that is an amazing tool resource to be on. Um, Monday mornings at 10 a.m. is the Zoom Mastermind with Dan Beer and Kyle Whistle. Like I said, if you're part of our group, you're in. If you're not, I can get you a one-time guest pass. Once you're part of our group, you're welcome to attend weekly. This is where two, six, they each made $6 million in commissions last year. Okay, $6 million in commissions. They take an hour out of their week every week to teach. You guys should be on that. So if you don't have the link, hit me up, let me know, or hit up Justin. Um, KV Core, who here is an expert at KV Core? Okay, 
So everybody here should strive to become an expert at KB Core. KB Core is an incredibly sophisticated CRM. It is our web page. It's our CRM. It does splash pages. It can generate up to 100 plus leads per month organically if you use it right. So there are three KB Core classes in EXP World that you should take. And there is a private one-on-one -on -one KV core group coaching every week by one of our group members. And Justin has the access to that. So if you would like to come to that anytime, it's a small group. There's like, it's like this five or 10 people. You can ask any questions you want. They will literally help you set everything up live. You know, it's an incredible resource and KV core is an amazing um, feature and benefit of EXP. Outside of that, you should make sure you follow the 30 day checklist. So if you haven't gone through everything on the 30 day checklist that we provide for EXP, you're missing out. So if you're not setting up your NAEA, so who here knows what NAEA.com is? Chris, Nicole, anyone? No. Um, yeah, so set up. Okay, so what is it? Tell everybody what NAEA.com is. It's essentially a certification and course training with, um, what are their names? Tinder and Jake. Reese. Mm -hmm. Michael Reese. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and a lot of it's like video, like self-taught. It's on Kajabi. It's essentially a platform where you take like 40 lessons. You get certain certifications as a buyer's agent, as a seller's agent. And then it provides a system that you can just like plug and play for your listing presentations and your buying presentations. Um, but you also get the certification with it too. Yeah. So how would everybody like to use the listing presentation and the buyer presentation and every presentation that Jay Kinder used to become the number two real estate agent at Coldwell Banker in the entire world at the age of 27, right? How would you like to use it for free? He took thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of training materials and coaching materials, and he gives them all away for free to agents within our group. But only if you set it up like Nicole did, only if you get your access, only if you log in, only if you watch the Kajabi, right? Can't make you do it. Um, but those are the best things. Justin just walked in. Um, Justin, what is one other thing that they're not utilizing that they should be utilizing? KV Core. KV Core, KV Core, KV Core. Okay. Um, and me. And Justin. And me. So if you haven't spoken to me or you've never reached out with a question, you're probably missing out on some important information. So any questions or anything like that, always, you know, call me, text me, email me. But if you need that, John or I can provide you with my, all my contact info. I have a question. How much for Justin to do all my KV Core for me? Because I hate it. KV Core? How to do all of it for me. I don't want to do what it. Good desserts do you bake? <laughs> How, which ones do you want? Oh, I will. This is I will a negotiation. Cinnamon roll. John can tell you. I, I want those cinnamon rolls, rolls girl. Man, those are, those are wild. Um, if you guys yeah. do all my KV core shit for me and set it all up and I don't have to touch it, I will give you two batches of cinnamon rolls. You guys can each have a, your own batch. 100%. I, I, as easy. long as instead of the cinnamon, I want you to put $100 bills in, the, in there. Bake them in. How many in a batch? Um, all right, so Nicole, we'll talk after this about um, helping you manage your KV core and if anybody else wants that. But the, the real answer is, you know, you really want somebody to know how to do it themselves because if somebody does it for you, it's never going to be as good as if you do it yourself, right? So, um, but Nicole, I know you're busy, so maybe we can do it for you. Uh, it just won't be as good, but it'll still work. Well, it's going to be better than what I have going on now, which is pretty much Correct. nothing with it. So, Correct. you know, Something... I'm diminishing returns. I'm, I'm thinking... Something is better than nothing. All right. What other questions do you guys have? Or ahas from today's educational experience? I should be making 8%. You should. I know. Really, right? If when you I stack have too it much up, knowledge. I, I have yeah. too much knowledge. Yeah. Think about it. If you really told people exactly how much work you did, you're, you're worth every penny. Doesn't mean they want to pay it, but you're oh, worth it. I know. Okay. Get, get it. Get it. Uh, next, another aha. What else did you guys learn today? Um, so I still haven't gotten my license, but I just wanted to ask you like what you would recommend 
to kind of like gain more knowledge on like zoning regulations and demographics of like your location and all that? I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that stuff. Okay. I would worry about build, building a database and learning how to, I would learn KV Core and I would, you know, you can get a guest pass and start to take those trainings. And um, I would just start to do everything. Is Yesenia, is she signed up? I signed no. her all the fast start stuff. So. Yeah, so you have all the fast start stuff already. So yeah. I, would, I would go through that stuff and I'm, don't worry about zoning and that all that stuff is nonsense. I just uh, feel like I like don't really know anything. I know, so like, yeah. that's fine. Find find somebody who wants to buy a house. That's what you yeah, you learn it. You, you learn a lot as you go. Like that kind of specificity. That's it's not all on the MLS. You don't really need to know it. Yeah, it's that's like, not what MLS. you're getting into day to day. So focus on what you're going to hit day to day, and learn the 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 specialized stuff as necessary. The only thing that matters is building a pipeline of clients, buyers and sellers, or you die. That's it. Ninety percent of your clients don't care about zoning. 90% of your clients don't know about zoning. Um, but no, it should, and I get it. You don't mean that specifically, but I get it. You want to learn like, what do you need to know? What you need to know is how to prospect. That's what you need to know. What you need to know is how to work KV Core. What you need to know is on the 30 day checklist. That's it. I, I'm just like worried that I won't have yeah, like, I understand. to answer like I, any questions. That's every, that's every single buyer, that's every single agent when they first get started is I'm afraid I'm going to find a client and I'm not going to be prepared. And what I can tell you is you could spend a year getting prepared and go out of business because you have no clients. You will get prepared when you have a client. And the difference between an amateur and an expert is an expert knows when they don't know the answer. And so all the only magic script you need to have in your vocabulary is this one. This is the magic script. Ready? I'll get back I don't you. know. That's a really good question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Let me look into it and I'll get back to you. I don't know. That's a really good question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. I'll look into it and get back to you with the correct answer. And you can even throw in the bonus line of, I don't want to just throw something off the cuff and possibly give you the wrong information. That makes you look extra professional because then you're like, I'm not even going to guess at it. I just want to get you the facts. And that's all anybody wants. Nobody needs an answer right away. Now, if it's like, what are the HOA dues for this property? And you're standing there and you can't figure it out. Like you probably need to pull up Redfin. <laughs> Might want to look on Zillow. <laughs> better have a spreadsheet better have better. a listing printout right it's not that hard but like that shit's right there right that's in the listing like you just look it up you're like i don't know how many square feet i don't measure i don't memorize how many square feet each house is hold on one second you look on your phone and then you tell them right it doesn't make you look like a genius if you want to look like a genius memorize all of the details of the listing before you walk in on the listing appointment and you could be like oh yeah so this is a, a four three it's 2432 square feet you have the Johnson model. You bought this seven years ago, right? You paid 182,000. You got a loan for 50 grand. And, and now, it, you, oh, you added that back room and you got a permit for it a year ago and blah, 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 blah. If you memorize all that shit, they'll think you're a magician when you walk in. They're like, how do you know that? You know the exact square footage? Yeah, it's in the tax records. Like I memorized it in the car before I walked in the door. But they really will think you're a genius. Um, that's a parlor trick. That's like, I used to teach the only thing time I would ever ask my son who was on the radio is when it was Bob Marley. So he'd be like two years old and I'd be like, Benny, who's this playing? And he'd be like, Bob Marley. And people would be like, how does he know Bob Marley? I'd be like, that's, it's called conditioning. It's a parlor trick. Um, all right. Any other ahas you guys got out of today? Okay, cool. Well, that concludes today. I have the recording if anybody wants it. We're going to put it on our YouTube channel as well. And reach out to me or Justin if you guys need anything in the meantime. Do not miss the Monday Mastermind. If you are in our group, you, that is mandatory. Go to the Dan Beer Mastermind on Monday. Have a good one, guys. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.